is long. Today is April the 16th, 2019. I am Monty Zero Gray Bay. And today I'll be continuing where I left off of King James Version of the Holy Bible. King James Version of the Holy Bible. Samuel 1, chapter. Oops. Chapter 13. Saul reproved. Saul reigned one year. When he had reigned two years over Israel, Saul chose him three thousand men of Israel, whereof two thousand were with Saul in Mith and Mishamash, and in Mount Bethel, and a thousand were with Jonathan in Gibeah and of Benjamin. And the rest of the people, he sent every man to his tent. Hold on. Ah, much better. And Jonathan smote the garrison of the Philistines that was in Gaba. And the Philistines heard of it. And Saul blew the trumpet throughout all the land, saying, Let the Hebrews hear. And all Israel heard say that Saul had smitten or smitten a garrison of the Philistines, and that Israel also was had an abomination of the Philistines. And the people were called together after Saul to Gilgal. And the Philistines gathered themselves together to fight with Israel. Thirty thousand chariots and six thousand horsemen and people as the sand which is on the seashore in multitude. And they came up and pitched in Michmash eastward from Bethaven. When the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait, for the people were distressed, then the people did hide themselves in caves, and in thickets, and in rocks, and in high places, and in pits. And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of God, and Gilead. As for Saul, he was yet in, in Gilgal, and all the people followed him trembling. And he tarried seven days, according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me, and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass, that as soon as he had made an, off an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came, and Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Mishmash. Therefore said I, the Philistines, will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly, thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. And Samuel rose, and gat him up with from Gilgal unto Gibeah of Benjamin. And Saul number of the people that were present with him from six hundred men and Saul and Jonathan his son and the people that were present with them abode in Gibeah of Benjamin but the Philistines encamped in Mishmash section Opera Shual and the spoilers came out of the camp of the Philistines in three companies. One company turned into the 
unto the way that leadeth to Oprah, unto the land of Shual. Section Bethron Zebulun. And another company turned the way to Bethron, and another company turned to the way of the border that looketh to the valley of Zebulun. Zebulun together with the wilderness. Section Smiths. Now there was no smith found throughout all the land of Israel. For the Philistines said, Lest the Hebrews make them swords or spears. But all the Israelites went down to the Philistines to sharpen every man his share, and his coulter, and his axe, and his mattock. Yet they had a file for the mattocks, and for the coulters, and for the forks, and for the axes, and to sharpen the goads. So it came to pass in the day of battle that there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any of the people that were with Saul and Jonathan. But with Saul and with Jonathan, his son was there found. And the garrison of the Philistines went out to the passage of Mishkamash. Chapter 14 Saul's Victories. Now it came to pass upon a day that Jonathan, the son of Saul, said unto the young man that bare his armor, Come, and let us go over to the Philistines' garrison that is on the other side. But he told not his father. <laughs> and Saul tarried in the uttermost part of Gibeah, under a pomegranate tree, which is in Migron. And the people that were with him were about six hundred men. And Ahia, the son of Ahitu, Ichabod's brother, and son of Phineas, son of Eli, the Lord's priest in Shiloh, wearing an ephod or ephod. And the people knew not that Jonathan was gone. And between the passages by which Jonathan sought to go over unto the Philistines' garrison, there was a sharp rock on the one side, and a sharp rock on the other side. And the name of the one was Bozaz, and the name of the other is Sinan. The forefront of the one was situated northward over against Mishmash, and the other southward over against Gibeah. And Jonathan said to the young man that bare his armor, Come, and let, let us go over unto the garrison of these uncircumcised. Maybe that it, it may be that the Lord will work for us, for there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. And his armor, and his armor bearer, said unto him, Do all that is in thy heart. Turn thee, behold, I am with thee, according to thy heart. Then said Jonathan, Behold, we will pass over unto these men, and we will discover ourselves unto them. If they say, If they say thus unto us, tarry until we come to you, and we will stand still in our place, and will not go up unto them. But if they say thus, Come up unto us, then we will go up, and for the Lord hath delivered them into our hand, and this shall be a sign unto us. And both of them discovered themselves unto the garrison of the Philistines. And the Philistines said, Behold, the Hebrews come forth out of the holes where they had hid themselves. And the men of the garrison answered Jonathan and his armor-bearer, and said, Come up to us, and we shall show you a thing. And Jonathan said unto his armor-bearer, Come up after me, for the Lord hath delivered them into the hand of Israel. And Jonathan climbed up upon his hands and upon his feet, and his armor-bearer after him. And they fell before Jonathan, and his armor-bearer slew after him. And that first slaughter which Jonathan and his armor-bearer made was about twenty men, thin, as it were, and half acre of land. 
which a yoke of oxen might plow. And there was trembling in the house, in the field, and among all the people, the garrison, and the spoilers, they also trembled, and the earth quaked, so it was very great trembling. And the watchmen of Saul, and Gibeah of Benjamin looked, and behold, the multitude melted away, and they went on beating down one another. Then said Saul unto the people that were with him, Number now, and see who is gone from us. And when they had numbered, behold, Jonathan and his armor-bearer were not there. And Saul said unto Ahia, Bring hither the ark of God. For the ark of God was at that time with the children of Israel. And it came to pass, while Saul talked unto the priests, and the noise that was in the host of the Philistines went on and increased. Saul said unto the priests, Withdraw thine hand. And Saul, and Saul and all the people that were with him assembled. Assembled themselves, and they came to the battle. And behold, every man's sword was against his fellow. And there was a very great discomfiture. Moreover, the Hebrews that were with the Philistines before that time, which went up with them into the camp from the country round about, even they also turned to be with the Israelites that were with Saul and Jonathan. Likewise, all the men of Israel, which had hid themselves in Mount Ephraim, when they heard that the Philistines fled, even they also followed hard after them in the battle. So the Lord saved Israel that day, and the battle passed over into Bethlehem. Bethlehem. And the men of Israel were distressed that day, for Saul had adjured the people, saying, Cursed be the man that eateth any food until evening, that I may be avenged on mine enemies. So none of the people tasted any food. Section Honey And all they of the land came to a wood, and there was honey upon the ground. When the people were come into the wood, behold, the honey dropped, but no man put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath. But Jonathan heard not when his father charged the people with the oath. Wherefore he put forth the end of the rod that was in his hand, and dipped it in a honeycomb, and put his hand to his mouth, and his eyes were enlightened. Then answered one of the people, and said, Thy father straightly charged the people with an oath, saying, Cursed be the man that eateth any food this day. And the people were faint. Then said Jonathan, My father hath troubled the land. See, I pray you, how mine eyes have been lightened, because I tasted a little of this honey. How much more, if happily the people had eaten freely today of the spoil of their enemies, which they found. For had there not been a, now a much greater slaughter among the Philistines, and they smote the Philistines that day from Mishmash to Ijalon, and the people were very faint, and the people flew upon the soil, and took sheep and oxen and cows, and slew them on the ground, and the people did eat them with, their, with the blood. And they told Saul, saying, Behold, the people sin against the Lord, and that they eat with the blood. And he said, Ye have transgressed, roll a great stone unto me this day. And Saul said, Disperse yourselves among the people. And say unto them, Bring me hither every man his ox, and every man his sheep, and slay them here, and eat, and sin not against the Lord, and eating with the blood. And all the people brought every man his ox with him that night, and slew them there. And Saul built an altar unto the Lord. The same was the first altar that he built unto the Lord. And Saul said, Let us go down after the Philistines by night, and spoil them unto the morning light. And let us not leave a man of them. And they said, 
do whatsoever seemeth good unto thee. Then said the priest, Let us draw near hither unto God. And Saul asked counsel of God, Shall I go after the Philistines? Will thou deliver them into the hand of Israel? But he answered him not that day. And Saul said, Draw ye near hither. All the chief of the people, and know and see wherein this sin hath been this, may, this day. For as the Lord liveth, which saveth Israel, though it be in Jonathan my son, he shall surely die. For there was not a man among all the people that answered him. Then said he unto Israel, Be ye on one side, and I and Jonathan my son will be on the other side. And the people said unto Saul, Do what seemeth good unto thee. Therefore Saul said unto the Lord, God of Israel, give a perfect lot. And Saul and Jonathan were taken, but the people escaped. And Saul said, Cast lots between me and Jonathan my son. And Jonathan was taken. And Saul said to Jonathan, Tell me what thou hast done. And Jonathan told him, and said, I did but taste a little honey with the end of the rod that was in my hand, and lo, I must die. And Saul answered, God do so, and more also, for thou shalt surely die, Jonathan. And the people said unto Saul, Shall Jonathan die, who hath wrought this great salvation in Israel? God forbid, as the Lord liveth, there shall not one hair of his head fall to the ground, for he hath wrought with God this day. So the people rescued Jonathan, that he died not. And Saul went up from following the Philistines, and the Philistines went to their own place. So Saul took the kingdom over Israel, and fought against all his enemies on every side, against Moab, and against the children of Ammon, and against Adam, and against the kings of Zobah, and against the Philistines. And whithersoever he turned himself, he vexed them. Section Amalekites And he gathered an host, and smote the Amalekites, and delivered Israel out of the hands of them that spoiled them. Now the sons of Saul were Jonathan, and Ishwi, and Melchishwa. And the names of his two, daughter, two daughters were these. The name of the firstborn, Merab, and the name of the younger, Michal. And the name of Saul's wife was Ahinon, the daughter of Ahimaaz. And the name of the captain of his host was Abner, the son of Ner, Saul's uncle. And Kish was the father of Saul, and Ner, the father of Abner, was the son of Abiel. And there were, and there was sore war against the Philistines all the days of Saul. And when Saul saw any strong man or any valiant man, he took him unto him. Islam. That was chapters 13 and 14 of King James Version of the Holy Bible. Next and lastly, I'll be reading the Circle 7 Quran. Chapter 28. and 29 because 28 is pretty short repine not oh wait hold on chapter 28 holy instructions from the prophet master and servant repine not O man at the state of servitude it is the appointment of Allah and hath many advantages and removeth ye from cares and solicitudes in life the honor of a servant is his fidelity his highest virtues are submission and obedience. Be patient, therefore under the reproof of thy master. And when he rebuketh thee, answer not again. The silence of thy resignation shall not be forgotten. Be studious of his interests. Be diligent in his affairs and faithful to the trust which he reposeth in thee. Thy time and thy labor belong unto him. Defraud him not thereof for them. He payeth thee for them. And thou who art a master, be just to thy servant, if thou expecteth from him fidelity and reasonable, 
and reasonable in thy commands, if thou expecteth ready obedience. The spirit of a man is in him. Severity and rigor may create fear, but can, but can never command love. Mix kindness with reproof, and reason with authority. So shall thy admonitions take place in his heart, and his duty shall become his pleasure. He shall serve thee faithfully from the motive of gratitude. He shall obey thee cheerfully from the principle of love, and fail thou not in return to give his diligence and fidelity their proper reward. Chapter 29 Magistrate and Subject O thou, the favorite of heaven, whom the sons of men, thy equals, have agreed to raise the sovereign power and set as a ruler over themselves, consider the ends and portents of their trust, far more than the dignity and height of thy station. Thou art clothed in purple and seated on a throne. The crown of majesty investeth thy temples. The scepter of power is placed in thy hand, but not for thyself, for these ensigns given, not meant for thine own, but the good of thy kingdom. The glory of a king is the welfare of his people. His power and dominion rest on the hearts of his subjects. The mind of a great prince is exalted with the grandeur of his situation. He evolveth high things, and searcheth for business worthy of his power. He calleth together the wise men of his kingdom. He consulteth among them with freedom, and heareth the opinions of them all. He looketh among his people with discernment. He discovereth the abilities of men, and employeth them according to their merits. His magistrates are just, his ministers are wise, and the favorite of his bosom deceiveth him not. He smileth on the arts, and thy flourish. His sciences improve beneath the culture of his hand. With the learned and ingenious, he delighteth himself. He kindleth in their hearts, in, the, in their breasts, emulation. And the glory of his kingdom is exalted by their labors. The spirit of the merchant who extendeth his commerce the skill of the farmer who enricheth his lands, the ingenuity of the artist, the improvements of the scholar, all these he honoreth with his favor, or rewardeth with his bounty. He planteth new colonies, he buildeth strong ships, he openeth rivers for convenience, he formeth harbors for his safety. His people abound in riches, and the strength of his kingdom increaseth. He frameth his statutes with equity and wisdom, and his subjects enjoy the fruits of their labor and security, and their happiness consists of the observance of the law. He foundeth his judgments on the principle of mercy, but in the punishment of offenders he is strict and impartial. His ears are open to the complaints of the subjects, he restraineth the hands of their oppressors, and he delivereth them from their tyranny. His people therefore look up to him as a father, with reverence and love. They consider him as the guardian of all they, they enjoy. Their affection unto him begetteth in his breast. A love of the public, the security of their happiness, is the object of his care. No murmurs against him arise in their hearts. The machinations of his enemies endanger not the state. His subjects are faithful and firm in his cause. They stand in his defense as a wall of brass. The army of the tyrant flieth before them as chaff before the wind. Security and peace bless the dwelling of his people, and glory and strength encircle his throne forever. Islam. That was chapters 28 and 29 of the Shoko Sever Quran. Today again is April 16th, 2019. I am Mighty Sabrell Bay. I am a Hebrew Muslim of Moorish descent. Islam.